Hello everyone. A new Java LTS was launched four days back. So uh, the last LTS was two years ago, which was Java 21. Uh, and then the Java 17 was four years ago by that calculation. Uh, they've been doing intermediate releases between LTSs. So 18 through 20 and then now 22 to 24 were all six month releases. Uh, and then the LTS ones have longer support as you can see. So um, there is big news for the Java ecosystem. Uh, anytime a new LTS comes in, there's a lot of interest and then a lot of big companies would rather just want to jump LTS to LTS. So now this would mean that people who are already on 21, for example, might move to 25 or people who have been on 17 for a while might directly move to 25 rather than uh, in between those smaller releases. So, um, uh, as I said, September 2023 was the last LTS, Java 21. And then this is the JDK 25 release and all the JEPs that got released with it. Uh, just to understand uh, like what all got changed between 21 to 25, what all got added. I fed in all the release notes to ChatGPT and then it was able to do a decent job at uh, summarizing all the major differences between. Uh, some we'll look at today, uh, but let me quickly highlight like something like this one. So this has been done purely to make Java less verbose because a lot of people complain that you have to write too much code just to like get a simple hello world working as well. So it's been compacting some source files, uh, al allowing you to run simple main methods, uh, just making the entry level barrier easier rather than having to worry about all the language structures so that before you can get into it. Uh, flexible constructor bodies is another important one. So anytime you uh, would extend a base class, the first thing that you need to do in that extended class was to call the uh, call the main uh, base class constructor using super. So now that that's a little more flexible. We'll see an example around that. Um, other than that, there's some preview features. So that means preview features are basically the ones that have been added but are hidden behind a preview flag. And in a future release, they'll probably get finalized. So Java has been making a lot of changes and improvements to structured concurrency. So around that, they have introduced a new concept called scope variable, scope values, which is similar to like thread local and stuff like that, but just makes it a little bit more easier and cleaner to use. Um, stable values is another preview and that's also an interesting one. So that's more on the lines of lazy loading. So uh, the value will only be loaded and used when you need it, not before that. So lazy instantiation and and whatnot then there's some hidden profiling uh, tracing changes uh, ahead of time compilation aot changes as well uh, which obviously will be harder to look at with code but more hidden into the into the jdk itself so along with that uh, this year is also the year for a new spring fr framework so spring framework 4 and spring boot sorry, Spring Framework 7 and Spring Boot 4 go GA in November. Uh, leading up to it, they already have some milestone uh, releases out there. So that means 4.0.0 snapshot is already out there for you to use. Uh, some features which they think are important uh, will get covered on a weekly basis leading up to the GA. Uh, so some have already been out and some will be out later. Uh, we'll look at these two today um, and then something like null safety they are moving to j specify as a framework uh, which a lot of the wider industry is also my, uh, migrating to so that's happening at the spring level as well and then some improvements in http clients how how you use it in tests and and so on now now without wasting a lot of time let me jump into the code directly uh, so I just have a simple Spring Boot application here, which has 4.0.0 snapshot, and we're using Java 25 as the as the JDK. Um, first, let's look at the 
um, Java language features, which we talked about. So the first thing that should stand out is this, a simple main function rather than it needing arguments and whatnot. So this goes back to them trying to make it easier, the entry level easier um, and so on, right? Um, now, other than that, uh, the module import declaration. So Java 9 introduced module as a concept. Uh, now they are also allowing you to import that at, uh, sorry, use module at an import level as well. So I'm able to use all of this by just doing import module java.base. I mean, I can remove that and then everything will start failing and then I can try to import everything one by one uh, or, you know, if you trust that, obviously we have to trust the Java base module. So you can just go ahead and do that. Uh, that I think is also cleaner, making making the code less verbose. Um, then the other thing is um, the IO static class. So this also got released in 25 and this is also making it easier and less verbose to get into the language. So rather than you worrying about system.out.println, that's what we've been taught since the beginning, right? You can just use this IO, which is more uh, intuitive, input output, IO class, and then basically uh, just do IO.println. And then there are some other methods as well, uh, which you might get, which is just normal print and then uh, you have read ln as well here. All right. Um, so all of this is making it less verbose, like the var keyword as well, which got introduced, I think a few releases back. All of this is leading into making Java easier to write, easier to read, uh, and removing that barrier, which a lot of people complain about that you have to write a lot to like even do the simplest things in Java. So that's about JP 5.11 and 5.12. And I have another example here, which is the flexible constructor example, which we talked about. So this is my base class, a simple base class with just string name. And then I have a football player, which extends that class and adds a club uh, field to it. So before, if this was not Java 25, you would need super as the first thing in your constructor. Otherwise, it'll complain. But now, as you can see, I can have it. Um, I can have it up or down. It doesn't matter. So here I'm just doing a simple validation that if club is Manchester City, throw an illegal argument exception. Otherwise, just go ahead and construct the object. So if I'll quickly run this you can see that I was able to construct player one easily, but player two just throw throws an illegal argument exception. So this, I think, just makes it easier to do simple validations there rather than doing it later in, in our life cycle. We can just do it in the constructor itself, which I think is, is quite clean. All right, moving on to the spring stuff. Um, the two things that we look at, one is the uh, API versioning. Uh, API versioning is an important concept. Uh, a lot of people do it in their own ways. Uh, either they do it in the path itself or they come up with some way of, uh, you know, trying to maintain multiple versions of the same API. But now with this, uh, Spring is adding uh, support, language support, first class language support to support API versioning, which I think is pretty cool. So let's look at these two mappings. Uh, Otherwise, everything is simple, nothing else, like just a REST controller. This is the top level request mapping. And then I have these two maps, uh, gets. So as you can see, the path is same, but I am uh, making it uh, label with version three and version four. If you're coming in with version three, uh, I'll return this. If you're coming in with version four, I'll return this. And then you can obviously do things like supporting like a default version and doing some more things using config and, and whatnot, right? So uh, to demo this, oh no, before that, you need to also specify something like what is the header that uh, people will use for API versioning. So this is the header that I've used, just a simple version. You can even do it through config, but uh, why not use a simple spring property to do it? So this is my 
example here so let's do version 4 first so quite rightly i get a 200 with spring boot 4 if i do 3 i got spring boot 3 with version uh sorry with uh, 200 now if i do a version 2 uh it doesn't exist in my code uh so i get a http 400 which makes sense now the other thing i wanted to show was the uh, resiliency first class resiliency support so um, this existed before in previous spring version as well but it had to be a a different library so you would add a, a different library and then that will give you that support um, but as often it is if it's a different library some people might never discover it but now it's like first class language support so I think more people will at least get to know about it um, so to demo that what I'm doing is I have this uh, API here which is uh, resilience slash with a path variable of a caller just to identify who's calling in and uh, this is the method that I'll call in the backend so this is I've annotated it with a service and this is important so you need to enable resilient methods otherwise this will not work um, so this is how I've set it up uh, there's a annotation called retryable and then you can say what which exception should you retry on uh, in my case I'm just doing it on illegal argument exception you could not specify anything retry on everything or you can have a finite set then you can have things like max attempts how many times should the method retry uh, delay multiplier so a combination of delay and multiplier can create something like the exponential back of situation so like 200 then 400 then 800 and so on but then you would want it to not become a very large number so you can cap it with max delay as well uh, another interesting annotation is concurrency limit so if you expect mul uh, multiple people calling in you can set a concurrency limit with a simple annotation and spring will take care of making sure that not no more than two callers get to reach the method at any given point of time um, in the method itself uh, it's quite simple I just I'm using a uh, atomic integer to track a counter on the thread and then if the counter is less than three I fail and throw a illegal argument exception um, and uh, we don't need that there let's make it here um, and then uh, once I am past it I just get a response so to demonstrate this I have uh, two request files which I'll run immediately one after the other so C, uh, so within a request file things will go sequentially so C1 then C2 uh, and then C3, C4, C5, C6 for this file but because I'll run them simultaneously uh, C1 and C3 will try to get and call the API at once and then the sequence in the file itself right so um, for this uh, let's one second actually let's make this four seconds and then restart the application and we'll run those two those two examples there all right so c1 i'm running all the requests here and then c3236 i'm doing it there now let's go and look at sorry uh, the run um, as you can see that at any given point of time um, I had only two callers trying to call me so how can we ascertain that uh, C1 called uh, succeeded then uh, C1 passed it to C2 by that time I started C3 as well so C2 failed once then C2 failed twice C3 C3 and then both of them passed and then once c3 was done it was able to pass it for a sequential on that if we play around with the timings a little bit more we can uh, we can see it much better so let's make it 2000 and maybe let's make it 8000 uh, so these are all milliseconds so 
I think we should be able to do a much better job with this one. And then we'll also have to like quickly switch to the to the run window as well. So we'll do that. Kind of missed it last time. All right, so let's clear this. Run all and then run all and then I come here. So yeah, now we can see uh, C1, C3, C1 passes, passes it to C2, um, C3, C2 is still blocked. So C4 uh, passes, passes out on C5 and so on. So I think it's just very neat how you can do this with minimal annotations and, uh, you know, uh, set up rather than having to do it on your own. So yeah, I think it's a uh, it's an important important year for Java with a new LTS version and a new frame Spring framework as well. Um, so yeah, a good luck migrating in case you guys decide to migrate. But in in any case, be aware that these things are on the horizon or already out, as in case for the Java version. Right? You guys have a good day. Bye.